Hi, friends. Welcome to Getting Your Real Estate Life Together. I'm Tracy Hicks with All Things Real Estate. And today I am super excited to introduce Jess. And we were just talking about her last name and I'm going to let her do that. <laughs> so welcome to the show, Jess. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So my last name is Lunavelle. The Say that three times fast. I know, right? <laughs> and Jess, you are currently right now in, are you in Toronto or are you in San Francisco? I'm in Toronto right now. You're in Toronto right now. Okay, great. So tell us what you do and how long you've been in real estate and all that good stuff. Just give me your bio. Yeah. So <laughs> I got my license when I was 21. I'm 37 wow. now. Nice. <laughs> Almost scary. 40. It's a little scary to say that number. I had I a know, lot of right? hard time going from 36 to 37 for some reason. Everybody has a number that is hard for them. <laughs> yeah. Seven was yeah. yeah. So yeah, I got my license when I was 21, but I grew up in the industry. Okay. So mom's been a realtor for 35 years. Wow. So I came out of school thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Like I have yep. a bit of a useless degree. What am I going to, you know, what's next? And she basically said, I think you should try real estate. I think you'll be good at it. So I just sort of fell into the industry. I got my license and yeah, I started kind of on my own. My mom is best friend, love her to death. We cannot work together. <laughs> so like there was just, there was no way we would, we we would not be together and still love each other if we I hear you. It's that mother daughter thing, you know, sometimes yeah. it works and sometimes it's just better to not. A hundred percent. So what I didn't realize getting into real estate was that my sphere was her sphere. Right. Right. So, you know, the typical like, hey, when you get your license, work your sphere, talk to your <laughs> friends and family. My friends and family, if they were, if anybody was going to be using anyone, they were going to use my mom who right. had 20 years of experience and who wasn't a 21 year old straight out Brand of school. Brand new realtor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So I had to find another way. And there was this brand new thing called Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I started prospecting on Facebook. Wow. And started like building relationships and giving value and like doing stuff on in Facebook classifieds. Cause I really thought that that was, you know, something that was underutilized that people weren't using it for business. Yeah. And I'm super introverted. Like if I'm, I, I mean, a lot less now than I think I was back then, but <laughs> yeah, I was, yes. I was shy. I was introverted. You know, my brokerage was telling me to go cold call and door knock and chase people down the street with my flyers, <laughs> you know, like those kinds of things. Yep. And it just, it was, it was never, that was never going to work for me. Right. So I started building relationships with people in the classified section who were looking for rentals or things like that. I would send them tons of information. I would give them tons of value. I would talk them through things. A lot of them, I could convince them that, I mean, this is back then, this would never yeah. work today, but that I, that they actually probably could buy. And so we, I went through that process. And then when it came time to do for them to do anything, they almost always came to me back to you. Yeah. So that's really how I, I, I initially built my business was all just, and I used to call it prospecting from my PJs because I could like <laughs> sit on my couch the computer. in my pajamas with a cat. And just, right. <laughs> right. So were you already like, like on Facebook a lot or like, were you using the classifieds yourself and that's how you came up with the idea? Not at all. I mean, I don't even know how I really started doing it. I think that it was really geared around what's most comfortable for me. Yeah. And yeah. what, like, if, if I was on the other end of it, what would I feel good about? Totally. Right. And, and I mean, I, I don't consider myself old, but like, that's a, 16 years is a while. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the way that we, I mean, when I got my license, I got this big gray pager and yep. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> right. And nice. so, I mean, technology and like things like you have to remember, like things weren't the way that they are now. No. Not and at all. so like today that stuff would never work because we're just bombarded with cold messaging and we're bombarded mm -hmm. with people sliding into, into our DMS and yep. you know, all of that stuff. Right. So, but at the time it was new and people weren't doing it. And I was very different and kind yeah. of what, ahead of the curve. Totally. Yeah. You know, while you were talking about the classified thing, you know, that totally does make me think about the DM and direct messaging. And I know it has like a, 
it seems like a bad word to some people because it's like, oh, either it's a spammer. Well, especially LinkedIn. That's just the worst. LinkedIn's it's like the worst for it. Ugh, the audit. Yeah. Well, and it's also worse with the real people that are using the bots to like, hey, Tra you know, like talk yeah. to you, but it's not you doing it. So it's never genuine. I never, I don't think I've reached out to anybody who sent me three messages in a row on LinkedIn. But I feel like with Instagram, especially for us at the store, like it is a connection to our customers. Yes. Like yes. they can send us a message and we can respond right away. We can send them the link to the product that they're asking about. Mm -hmm. We can talk to them about, you know, even just if they're like, oh my gosh, I love my, my sold sign or I love my yeah. t-shirt or look at my dog and his <laughs> bandana or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it gives them a way to like be even more excited about, and that's what we want, of course, in any business, not just, you know, in the retail, but for realtors, it's the same way, like staying connected and staying in front of them. Like, don't be afraid of the direct messages. Just obviously don't be a weirdo, but use them with care. Yeah, exactly. And use it just like you did. You leveraged it to work for you. You said it perfectly that you did what was comfortable for you. And mm -hmm. I am constantly telling people to do that because if your coach or some, a realtor gave you advice and said, you know, and they're a, a door knocker king or queen, and they're just so good at it, they're going to tell you, you should be door knocking. Exactly. But that doesn't work for everybody. And I think I do feel like people are starting to kind of catch on to that, but there's not there's... one way to build a business. Right. Right. Yeah. And with the new agents coming in, I think that they're soaking up all the information that they can. And they, if somebody tells them that they should be door knocking, they're going to feel like they should be door knocking. So I, and I was the same way. Yeah. I really, you know, I started at Keller Williams and they were very much at the time, cold call, door knock, cold, yep. call the phone book and shy 21 year old Jess was like, what do you mean? Right. Like I've been it's watching my mom for 20 years, build this beautiful referral business. Right. You want me to what? <laughs> exactly. You're like, don't make me, don't make me. And I did it a couple of times and I hated it. Ugh, and I remember horrifying. thinking, if this is how I have to build my business, I don't this business that. is not for me. Right. right. Exactly. And so, you know, it was the difference between, do I try to find my own way? Mm-hmm. Or do I just not do this? Because me becoming a master door knocker was, it went against everything that I, that I was. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right? exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that ties in perfectly to the listings lab hmm. and some of the things that you're doing. So I first tell us what the listings lab is, and yeah. then like talk a little bit about kind of some of the things that you all are talking to agents about, hmm. and, it's, and it's about building a six figure business, correct? So I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of background because it yes. doesn't like with a little bit of story, the, the, like the transition into the listings lab doesn't really make sense. Okay. So when I met my husband, I decided, okay, you know what? I'm either going to really do this business or I'm going to get out. Yep. I'd been kind of like, I'd been a six figure agent, but it had come quite easily to me for quite a while. So we made the decision to stop looking at ourselves as agents and start looking at ourselves as marketers. Mm-hmm. And we went out to all kinds of other industries and figured out what was working in service-based industries outside of real estate. We all know real estate's usually five years behind. Yep. <laughs> so we went out, we built all of this, this marketing that was frankly not being done yet, yeah. especially not in our market. Mm -hmm. And we went from essentially like wherever we were to seven figures in six months. Wow. So we grew really, really fast. Then I started growing a team and we really started to kind of leverage. And then I got to a point where we were doing hundreds of deals a year and my team was running really, really well. And I was able to travel whenever I wanted. And I would get these like knocks on the door and people would say, how are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Like I'm struggling. I don't know where my next deal is coming from. Can you help me? So when I was in my early thirties, I went through like a little bit of an existential crisis mm -hmm. and I was like, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Am I, am I supposed to be a realtor forever? Right. right? And I felt like I'd kind of cracked the code. It was like a finely oiled machine. It was doing well, but I kind of got to a point where I wasn't feeling super fulfilled by it anymore. I think mm -hmm. it's, I'm, I'm very entrepreneurial. So I think I was like missing the build. Yep. So my husband basically said, you know, what if you just helped other people do what you've done? And so we transitioned into the listings lab. So I stopped selling. I still have a license, but I stopped selling at the end of 2017. Mm -hmm. And we started the listings lab and we grew, we've grown it very quickly. 
but it really is, it's like marketing and marketing training and mentorship to get someone from six to seven figures. Wow. And the whole idea behind it is it's all through creating relationships at scale. Yeah. Yep. So it's not your spammy bro marketing. It's not, <laughs> it's not even direct response marketing. Yeah. It's, you know, using human psychology and helping people build credibility, authority, and no like and trust. Yeah. And you know what else it sounds like? It sounds like that it is for people that already have their, but it sounds like yeah where you left off in your business and it was almost like, okay, here's where I'm getting stagnant. Maybe the whatever year itch where you're like, it's that entrepreneurial thing. You can't not do something. And if you feel like you've mastered it in as much as you've wanted to be mastered, you're like, okay, on to the next thing. What is that? And so what I think is really cool about what you're saying is that you've built a business that for people who might be in the same situation that you felt like you were in. Or or they feel like they're kind of on that hamster wheel, like that early, yep. like that low six figure hamster wheel of, you know, and I think that that's actually the most painful part of the business for a lot of people because they're successful, yeah. but they're not successful enough to have yes. leverage. Yes. And so they're still, for the most part, doing most of it themselves. You know, there's a lot of that happening where it's like, okay, I'm still the business. Yep. And so what we really want to do, like we have a, a, a client who we work, we started working with at the beginning of April of last year, and he was in the low, the low six figures. He was doing about 150 and he finished last year from April to December, 800,000 in commission. Wow. And now he's messaging me being like, I want to start a new business. And I'm like, <laughs> it's because he's, he's at seven figures. Yeah. He has the leverage. And, and now like the business doesn't rely on him to essentially turn the wheel every day. Mm -hmm. And so now he's got that like, okay, so what's like, this is what's great. Next? I can go sit on the beach now if I want, yep. or I can take time, like a ton of time off and do whatever I want. But now what's next? Yep. That's amazing. And also too, everybody probably, well, everybody has their money story and I didn't really think that it was a thing and I never did coaching. I never really understood that part of it. When I got into it, the day I got, the week I got my license, I met up an escrow officer or title rep and uh, got handed like 20 Brian Buffini CDs and was like, <laughs> here you go. And I was like, what? I didn't even understand any of that stuff. I didn't know what a coach was. I came yeah. to working with kids. And so those are the only kind of coaches I know as sports. And so I was like, I, so it just never resonated well with me. And then over time, just like you said, you kind of get stagnant. How do I get off this hamster wheel? First of all, realizing that you're on a hamster wheel, because yeah. usually you're on it for a year or two or longer until you start to feel the burnout. Yes. And yeah. then you're like, I don't like my job anymore. And, you know, of course, we all know real estate is ups and downs and ebbs and flows. But if it's a long period of time where you're you like, start uh, to feel it. <laughs> yeah, I and and entrepreneurs love getting out of bed and going to work. They don't want to not go to work. And so that's when the change comes in and just realizing that. But yeah, I did a money coach and I realized that I I'm in it for the chase. I am like, oh, I need to pay this much in bills. I can do that. And then that's yeah. my goal. So I was like, I need to set the goal higher and also being able to give back and that kind yeah. of thing. So yeah. you can't give back if you're not making enough money to do that. And so whether it's your time or money. The other thing too, is that, you know, when you're growing a business, you have essentially three resources that you can leverage. You've got time, energy, and money. Yep. And if you have money to reinvest back into your business, you can actually just grow faster. Yep. Right. So I think that like a lot of it is that people get very stuck in this, at this one level of, I still have to do everything. I am wearing all the hats every day mm -hmm. and the task switching and the like constantly being on call and all of that, that is fun when you first get your license becomes too much after a while. And I think that, that like the truth really is, is that what we want is to be able to actually take a step back. And there's like the reasons why people, most people get into real estate in the first place is unlimited income potential, mm -hmm. being able to set your own schedule and being able to help people. Yep. And a lot of the time agents will get stuck in this. I feel like I'm a slave to my business. <laughs> I'm yeah. stuck at this one income level and I can't break through that ceiling. And I don't even want to help anybody because I'm so exhausted. <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. Right? 
So how does the, um, just tell us really quickly with the listings lab, how is it set up? Like, yeah. um, or just, yeah, just tell us how the yeah. program works. So we focus on organic social media and paid traffic, not boosting, like actually creating psychological campaigns mm. to take someone from stranger to client in an automated way. So everything that we do is always about one to many which is the opposite of like one-to-one, -one, which is the way that most people initially build their business. So it's okay. kind of like taking what you're already good at and scaling it. Yep. So there's a lot of support in the program. There's, you know, two calls every week. There's a Facebook support group that we're in like 24 hours a day, not 24 hours a day, but 12 <laughs> hours a day. And then there's also like a ton of training modules and, and things like that. I would say most people who go through the program and complete it will at least triple their business. Mm -hmm. And it just, it really does just compound from there, but it's all based around human psychology, law of reciprocity, give before you ask, serve before you sell. Wow. And building that no like, and trust factor through really, really high quality content. Yeah. Yeah. And do you find that people that are in the program, are they already like social media? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cause I, no. I, I mean, I still run into realtors that are like, oh, I don't really have an Instagram. I'm like, what? Give me your phone. Yeah, no, no. And I would say <laughs> most of the people who come into the program, like they may have social media, but they're definitely not savvy. Yeah. Um, and they're just really doing what everyone else is doing. They just yeah. listed like here's a not staircase. Genuine stuff. Yeah. Right. Because a lot of agents, like, like it's, even though it's such an important part of your online presence, there's nobody who's like teaching you, your broker's not teaching you what to put online. They're just, you're just following what you're seeing everyone else do. Right. So what we really do is like, we create mini celebrities and we help people. I, I want you to go to the co the local coffee shop and for people to be like, oh my God, like that's yes. Sarah, right. <laughs> yes. And, and to create that, that connection where, you know, we all have that influencer that we follow that we're like, I just feel like I was thinking about that, that last night. I was like, there is someone I follow. I followed her for years. She has no idea who I am. She lives in Austin, Texas. And if I saw her down, like walking down the street, I'd probably high five her and she would have no idea who I was. <laughs> that's right. Awesome. And, and like, that's the kind of relatability that we're building out with the agents. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that people, it's that approachable celebrity. Yeah. Where people are like, I feel like this person's my friend, even though she doesn't know me. <laughs> exactly. And can they do that? Do they have to do social media to do that or to be, I mean, is the program kind of built around social media? Cause I almost feel like in a way, sometimes when I am like, you have to do Instagram, I almost feel like I'm the one that says you have to door knock. Like if they, you know, if it doesn't work for them. I definitely think that there's an element of like, choose your platforms. Yes. I think that there's way too many people who are trying to be everywhere all the time and not doing any of it. Well, exactly. So, you know, I would say Facebook is probably a must just because it is what it is. And yeah. from an ads perspective, like there's just so much more leverage available through the Facebook ad manager, mm -hmm. but it also depends on who your target market is. You know, not every target market is going to be on Instagram. Right. They may be on LinkedIn, wherever you can, you can actually be, be consistent yeah. and that, you know, your ideal client profile is spending time online. Yes. So your program isn't agnostic to which social media platform, except well, for Facebook, kind of, of course. Yeah. I mean, to narrow yes, in on Facebook, that. but then we also like, will help them figure out, it's really about like the right message at the right yes. time on the right platform. Okay. Yeah. Right. So if, if you want to work with corporate, I don't know, like corporate professionals in New York, yeah, you've got to be on LinkedIn. Yes. Like, right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care if you don't like LinkedIn. If you, you, you've got to be on LinkedIn, that's where your people are. You have to know that. Yeah. It's not, it's not about, you know, when it comes to really good digital marketing at the end of the day, they're all kind of the same. Mm -hmm. And you may have a platform that you like, I really love TikTok. Like I can waste so much time on TikTok, but I'm not growing my business on TikTok. Right. So like Facebook and Instagram are my business platforms. And then I can go on TikTok and watch I mean, I don't even wear makeup, but I'm I, like, I, I am so fascinated by these people and how they do their makeup on TikTok. Yes. So I watch makeup videos on TikTok <laughs> and they can, TikTok can categorize me in completely the wrong place and that's fine. Oh, for sure. And whereas like Instagram and Facebook for me are my business building platforms. Yep. And that's so funny because we're this, well, I'm the same way. I have not been on TikTok at all, but I, well, I think ever since Instagram 
brought in the reels and then everybody was using their TikTok videos on the reels, you just get, it's a rabbit hole. You just get stuck on the TikTok loop and you're like, and it's I repost hours them. later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's funny. I realized a couple of weeks ago, I was like, I keep reposting this, but I'm never liking their video. And I'm like, I'm not really helping out. So I'm now I like it first and then share it out. But yeah, I mean, I think I love what you're saying about you, you have to find your audience. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times realtors get caught up in the everyone's my client but it's not true yeah, if you're tr if you're trying to speak to everyone you speak to no one exactly right? if, exactly. if you're not actually being specific about because the other thing the, the key part of all marketing is market research mm -hmm. and an upsizer is dealing with very different emotional issues and reasons for why they're moving than a downsizer yes you know a first-time buyer is going to have very different pains problems fears and desires than a second-time investor like so different. The messaging is so different. And, and when, when you become that agent, who's, I can help you with all your, your real estate needs. I can help you buy, sell, rent, invest from here to Timbuktu. You sound like everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually just not, it's, it's kind of like just not marketing. Right. Well, and if you think about it, realtors are, we get, and I, I used to do this with, um, like, I feel like I got my life back when I, in, in terms of like, when I stopped practicing as well, it was like, I no longer live in 30 and 45 day increments. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's like tomorrow. And so I think realtors do the same thing. Exactly what I'm thinking about when you talk about the messaging is how small is that box when you're putting a listing in and you have to tell the story or the remarks. I feel like that they, when they think about messaging, that's probably what they automatically go to is that's where most of their messaging goes is into that listing. And when you were putting it in your MLS, you know, you're writing out that, that little pro public remarks, they're thinking that nice. Yeah. That's the first <laughs> thing there. And so like ad copy and I'm having more realtors ask if I know any copywriters to help them write. And I love hearing that because that just means they want to step up exactly what you're They're saying. They're trying to they're, do better. Yeah. Messaging. Yeah. yeah. And, and not wasting their time and taking advantage of the things that they already are doing and just enhancing that and utilizing some of the tools that they already are doing. You know, and, and that's the thing is that it, you, it doesn't matter how great a marketer you are, how bad a marketer you believe that you are we can always all get better. Yeah. Right. And always. so it's really about learning, taking it on, growing, testing, doing the market research, having the conversations. And honestly, just showing up regularly and showing your face is more than most agents are doing. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So are you referring? Do you still have a team or are you completely out? I don't. I have been recently. So my best friend is a realtor. Okay. In my home market. Nice. So if stuff comes to me, I tend to refer to her. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, no, I'm my, my team, my, my team is still together and they're still doing their thing. I'm not a part of it anymore. Oh, wow. I'm a really big believer. Like for me that like focus breeds excellence. Yeah. If I have, if I'm trying to do too many things, I'll get some shiny object syndrome yep. and again, <laughs> nothing will be done particularly well. So the listings lab and like our, our programs within the listings lab are my full-time focus. Nice. Okay. And then is the listing, so you guys have a Facebook group, but you also have another platform that you work from and that's where you, that's where the group meets and. Yeah. So we have like, we do two zoom calls a, a week. We've got like a general call and then we also have an ads clinic, you know, basically like the program goes through everything from mindset to building out a signature system for each individual visual branding, core service, like, like your messaging, your psychological nine point psychological journey from stranger to client. We yeah. go through lead generation ads, audience creation, retargeting campaigns, yeah. writing and creating content, written video. We go through Instagram and Facebook and yeah. LinkedIn. So like, there's a lot. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So when I got your intake form, you had written something on there that we haven't encountered before. Okay. So you and I chatted a little bit before the podcast yeah. and you were like, everything's on the table. You know, obviously that's why you put it on there. And I felt like that we should definitely talk about it because I felt like we may be doing somebody a disservice by not, by not. talking about it. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about some domestic violence things and overcoming that. So tell us, 
your story or yeah. why you put that on the intake form and like, well, you so, know. so the reason why I'm, I'm totally open to, sh- I'm an open book, right. Yep. And, and, and everyone in my world knows that I yep. actually entrepreneur magazine wrote an entire article about like my domestic violence struggle. So it's out in the world. Oh, wow. <laughs> Good for you. So when I was probably 24, I'd had my license for a couple of years. I was doing pretty well. I met a very handsome Australian guy (laughs) and, you know, we started seeing each other and it really became a really toxic, really awful situation. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I were talking about this earlier that, you know, he felt very threatened by my success. He felt very threatened by the fact that I was out and working and creating something and I had a business and there was just, there was a lot going on and there was a lot behind it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I never thought that I would, like I, you'd hear stories or things like that. And I never thought that I would be in that situation. Yeah. Right. Because I truly believed that I was different and that I Mm -hmm. had better boundaries and you know, all the things that, but it was such a slow burn. It happens so slowly. It had like my, it's almost like, you know, my, my self-confidence was whittled away slowly. And then there was like a physical, some sort of a physical encounter and he was so sorry. Apologize. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. And it would never happen again. And, and then I, I, I would almost feel bad for him and it just, it spiraled and spiraled and spiraled. And it was a couple of years. Wow. And yeah, it just, it got so bad. I was lying to my parents I was, t- my dad's a doctor and I was telling my dad that there was something like wrong with my hemoglobin because I was bruised, Ugh. like like things like that. Like I was yeah. making stuff up and I was hiding, I was hiding it from people to protect him. And yeah. it just, it ended up being really, really toxic. And real estate was actually one of the, I think was one of the triggers. And also he was one of the reasons why I was afraid to keep growing. Right. So I just kind of, I I hit a certain level and I kind of maintain the status quo Uh because in that situation, I didn't feel like I could grow and I didn't feel like I could really go after my goals and my dreams because it would be, I didn't know what that would do to the relationship. Yep. Yeah. And then there was just one night. I don't know what, what happened. It was, it was the first time he wasn't sorry. Oh, that's what did it for me is I was, it was the first time that there wasn't the apology and there wasn't the, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Or it was the first time that he had kind of blamed it on me. Mm. You know, if you didn't make me, if you didn't frustrate me so much, this wouldn't happen. Wow. And so I called my, one of my best friends and she had a big burly husband. (laughs) And I said, look, like, here's the truth and here's what's been going on. And I need you to come over here and I need you to help me get him out. Wow. Yeah. That is that, you know, and it's, I don't know, just hearing that story, first of all, it gave me goosebumps and I haven't personally been in that situation, but I, I see little things here and there. And obviously from the outside in and social media obviously has changed that, but it's like, what do you do and how do you handle it? But I feel like what you were saying, the way it was like a slow burn, that was all calculated. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he knew what he was doing and you just, you're in it every day. So you're not seeing the outside in and the bigger and nobody picture. else saw it. Yeah. And what you said about you didn't want to grow your business totally makes sense. Maybe somebody's not in a, you know, a domestic violence situation or, or not yet or whatever, but that's something that I think that women should be cognizant of is if you're afraid to grow because it's going to affect your home life or the, your significant other, then first of all, you're not, your business isn't going to grow because you're, you're afraid to do that because it might hurt something that's going on in your personal life. And so I never even thought of it that way. And it, but it makes perfect sense when you say it it out loud. Yeah, It was very, um, and he, you know, and it's funny because like, you know, when all of this came out, my parents, right? I'm super, super close to my parents. My parents were so horrified that, and they felt guilty because they didn't see it. Didn't know. Yeah. Nobody but you did knew. such a good job. Right. Nobody knew. It. And it affected me for a long time. Yeah. Even yeah. After that. And, you know, when I met my husband again, like I remember my first date that I went on with my husband, he had walked to the bar that we were going to like have drinks at and I driven and I was afraid for him to see my car. 
Ah. Because I, because I drove like a cute little Mercedes convertible and, and I thought that that was still in me of he's going to, he's, he's not going to like me because he's going to think that I'm too successful. Yep. Yeah. And it of course ended up being the opposite. We've been yeah. married for, we've been married for almost eight years and he's every business that I've been built since I met him has, he's been like a huge part of, part it. of it. Yeah. 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 And I think too, like women, successful women, well, I guess I'll just speak for myself, but I've always had a hard time with that as well. It's like, I always feel guilty, you know, I have a nice car and I feel guilty. And then I I'm arguing with myself in my head. I'm like, no, I deserve this. I worked hard for it. You know, I, and so I think that probably some women have probably gotten over that obstacle for themselves, but I think that it's the same with body image and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. It's like those little things that we have to overcome as women. It's just like, oh my God. <laughs> like, really? Well, for sure. For sure. And I definitely know, like I've had since, since that entrepreneur magazine story came out, I've had so many women reach out to me. Yeah. And say, I'm in a, I'm in a relationship where my husband doesn't, doesn't want me working, but yeah. I'm driven and ambitious. And, you know, I don't feel like I'm going to be like a full person if I don't, if I don't do this and I don't yeah. do this, but I feel like at some point I'm going to have to make a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes women just need somebody to reach out to and listen to them. And for sure, they, they probably know already, obviously they're, if they're coming to you, they already know that they're in a situation that mm -hmm. isn't a good one and just need a little bit of support. And so I guess that's something that we can all be again, aware of, and just have a little, a little eye on those little kinds of things and support each other. Like 100%. We're, we're in and, this together. <laughs> and like, it's actually part of my life now. I never thought I would say this before, but that I'm actually super grateful for. Yeah. Because I learned so much about me and about what I'm capable of. And when I met my husband, I knew that I was, I think that I, I, I may have like my, I'm obsessed with my husband, but I may have like <laughs> taken him for granted or I may yeah. not have actually fully understood really how special he was. Yeah. If I hadn't been through something like that. True. Yeah. I mean, we all learn from, hopefully we learn from, I mean, sometimes we do it more than once, but we learn from the hard times and the mistakes and that's a true entrepreneur, right? You're like, yeah, <laughs> <Go> forward. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So how long did it take after you're getting out of the situation and all of that, you continued on with your real estate business mm -hmm. and became more successful because obviously yep. you had that freedom and that room for growth and then building listings lab. What was the other program that you talked about your marketing stuff in that you said that's combined in with listings lab, so right? We have, we have three programs for different levels. So yeah. So we have like the accelerated agent that's for new agents where people less than six figures. Mm. We have the listings lab, which is like our, our, our main program, which is six to seven figures marketing. Yep. And then we have the seven figure agent, which is basically like, how do you get to seven multiple seven figures through team scaling, automation, leverage, leadership? It's basically like the whole package of- yeah full, fully leveraged, uh, seven figure business that you okay. can have, but take naps and take off for a month and, yes. you know, not, not have to be the business. Exactly. Exactly. And then do you guys also work on like business structure and things like that at all? Because yes. so that all happens within this, like we talk about business models and things like that in all programs, but in terms of like, and, and the seven figure agent program, like every single person is building their team differently. We don't have one model that we teach. We look at, it's, it's a very holistic approach. Like we look at your, like that, like the team leaders, personality testing. We look at the, the people on the team, where the holes are. We do business audits and what their goals look like. Cause not everybody wants the same things. Yeah. And then we work backwards from there to help them create not only a plan, but also execute on exactly what they need in order to get where they want to go. I love that. And sometimes that's all it takes. Like I always say, we don't know what we don't know, but also too, we work so hard in our business that we don't take enough time to look outside of it. Looking and to work in. on the business too. Yeah, on the business. <laughs> yeah. And then we feel, I think i for me personally, I always feel like I'm doing that on my personal time, like working on the business. And I've been slowly trying to change that. And I'm trying to read books during the day because I'm like, this is about my business and this is going to This help. is work. 
Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. So I think doing that is helping me change my mindset mm-hmm. and, you know, just being aware of that. So even just little things like that can help you get to another level in your business or work on something that you didn't think that you needed to work on before or, yeah. and that's what keeps us going. Let's be real. We talked about it earlier. Entrepreneurs cannot stop. And so yeah. they don't know how. <laughs> no, for sure. And, but I think the most important part is focus. Yep. And like, I know people, I have, I have friends who are agents who've read every book under the sun, Yeah, but they've implemented none of them. None of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like not a single thing of so any that of That was a big waste of time. Right. And so like, really like find a, like you read a book, it resonates with you. You're like, this is brilliant. Instead of moving on and reading another book, go back and implement the things that are in that book or, you know, a training program or whatever it is that you're doing, work on one thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tr- really trying to, when, when I'm doing this, I'm trying to read the book with intention. So I'm kind mm. of stopping and I, I will, t- I've taken like five pages of notes and just a, like an hour sitting and just like, okay, let me write all this stuff down. But that's how I, op- that's how I work. And so I think people need to realize that they need to learn the way that they learn, whether that's reading a book or, you know, yeah. listening to a podcast. To yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So where can people find you Jess and listings lab and your awesome Instagram page that I stalked before we talked? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Instagram's a, a, like a good first step. You may not be able to spell my name, but it's just <laughs> at Jess Lunavel, L-E-N-O-U-V as in Victor E-L. Yes. Okay. And then, um, is, and they can get to listings lab through there. You have a link tree or something. Yeah, we have, we also like, so the two places that I would say you're going to get the most value from me or learn the most about what we do would be my Instagram and my Facebook group, which is just the listings lab method for real estate agents. It's okay. a Facebook group. There's about 18 and a half thousand agents in there. And we do tons of trainings. I went live in there literally 10 minutes before I came to talk to you. Nice. Yeah. So like, there's just, there's tons of stuff in there as well. So anybody can join that group and as then you long have another as they're a group. licensed agent. Okay. Nice. Love that. I know. Cause you get like the randos that want to get yeah. in there. Yeah. You have to specifically, like, I have to be able to see that you're an agent. <laughs> good. Good. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. This was so much fun. I definitely, every time I'm scheduled to do a podcast, it's just, you know, one of the to-do lists, but I, every single time I do it, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so, I'm so I'm, glad I did that. <laughs> yes. And also just meeting people and connecting with people, obviously through the pandemic, you know, we have to yeah. do it this way, but it's still a connection that I crave as a business owner. And so I appreciate that you took the time today and, and all the things that you're doing and girl power and all that good stuff we (laughs) talked about. We need more women doing this kind of stuff. So yeah. So I appreciate you. So this was my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.